Today we are launching our first EC2 instance. So far we created our virtual part in the cloud. We also worked on subnets and security groups. Everything is set and now it's time to create the resource that excites me the most. EC2 is basically a virtual server. You can see it as something similar to computer you have at home. So whatever you are able to do with your local computer, let's say playing a game or developing some code or developing a game itself, you're also able to do it in an EC2 instance or in a virtual server. Now, when you develop a game in your local computer, you have to invite people to your home and they have to physically interact with your device in order to play that game. And this is the detail bringing EC2 instance or a virtual server one step further. Because it's deployed in the cloud with a virtual server, people can play the game you develop or whatever website, app you are serving from wherever they are. So this is the detail bringing EC2 instance to a step further. Now, because it is deployed in the cloud and it's served on the web, people can play your game or visit your website or interact with your app from wherever they are. And this is why the concept is called a virtual server. And EC2 instance is also a virtual server. I could tell much more about EC2 to you today and go into details, but I don't want to keep your patience. So without any further waiting, let's go ahead and create our first EC2 instance. Now go to your AWS console and top part, write EC2, and you will see EC2 as the service, click there. And what you see here now is your EC2 dashboard. Now in the middle of the dashboard, you will see launch instance. Just click there to launch your first EC2 instance. Now at the beginning, this might seem a little overwhelming because there are seven sections, but basically today we will work only with four of them. The first four will be good enough. I'm not even counting the name part. Uh, and for storage and advanced details, even though there are stuff that we will learn in future, for now we will skip them and we will keep them as it is because they are already good for our current project. Now because our game is called 2048, I named the EC2 instance 2048 as well, but in your other projects you can name it anyhow you want. In application and OS images part, we will decide on two things. First one will be to pick the right AMI and for these projects uh, we can pick Amazon Linux 2023 AMI. It's good to go. And the second decision is about architecture. By default, it's providing you x86 as the architecture, but let's go with IRM. It's actually a little bit better for smaller projects. It's a little more economic, so let's go with this one. When it comes to instance type, we can go with free trial versions available. T4G small is a good option. As you can see, it has 2V CPU and 2 GB memory, so it's good to go. Bear in mind that as soon as you run only one EC2 instance in your account, you will be paying nothing for free trials because they have 750 hours free trial available for every month, which is almost equivalent to one month time. Now the key pair part is important because this key pair we will use later on to connect to our device and it's also very critical for your security. This is why we have to create a new key pair. Definitely don't create an EC2 instance without a key pair included. So for this one, let's name it 2048 TP, but you can name it however you want. And when it comes to file format, PEM is good to go for Linux devices, for MacBook devices, and also Windows 10 or higher. If you are using an earlier version than Windows 10, then you better go with PPK option. And write me in the comments if that's your case, then I will suggest you some videos on how to turn it PPK format into a useful version. But for most of us, we are good to go with PEM and you don't have to change anything about key pair type. So let's create this key pair and that will be there. All right, let's go ahead with network settings. This is quite important. As you know, in the previous video, we created a particular VPC for our project. It's quite critical and I recommend you to use that particular VPC we created. And now here you click edit button and instead of default VPC, you have to use 2048 VPC that we have created. Dedicate one for each of your project. It's a golden thumb, golden rule. Make sure that you have that one. And when it comes to subnets, make sure it's one of the public subnets. You will probably have it by the name. Make sure there is a subnet with internet gateway. Otherwise you will not have any internet access. Definitely make sure that you have auto assigned public IP enabled because for people to have access to your application, 
you will need a public IP address and this is where you make the decision to make it enabled. Now also in the previous video we created some security groups already so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We will just select the existing security groups we have. The one that we created that provides SSH, HTTP and HTTPS access to the public is good enough. So as soon as you click that one, it's good to go. It was supposed to seem quite complicated already, but no, we are actually done with the last part as well. So everything is set. You can make one final look. As you can see, we picked our particular VPC. We choose the public subnet. We also selected our security group that we created earlier. The key pair we have is 2048 key P and also the instance type is T4G small and also with AMI that we picked Amazon Linux 2023 AMI and especially in the architecture we picked 64-bit ARM type of architecture. So everything is good to go. You just click launch instance and you're ready. It will probably take a minute or two for your EC2 instance to be fully prepared. At this moment you can compare it to a brand new laptop you just bought and you just turned on. It has a lot of potential but so far it is completely empty. Now, to install some useful things into your EC2 instance, we will use SSH protocol and we will connect to your EC2 instance. I will show you two options of making an SSH connection with your EC2 instance. First one is fairly easy, but it's not the best practice. Second one is a little more challenging, but it's definitely the best practice. Okay, now it's time for us to connect to our EC2 console. There are two ways to connect to our EC2 instance. The first one now I will show you, it's actually right now you are in your EC2 dashboard and in your EC2 dashboard, click on instances running and there you will see your 2048 EC2 instance. And the state and status check part, they should be in green color. If it's still initializing or if there are some details, Give it a minute or two and then it must be ready. And once you see green ticks in both of them, click on them over here and then on the right top you click on connect. Don't change anything here, EC2 user is good and then click connect once again. And after waiting just a little more, you should have basically a screen similar to this one. Now, if there is some problem happening, let's also take a look at that one. If you are having some connection troubles when you are trying to connect to your EC2 instance, if you have a problem similar to what you see right now in the screen, now the problem is most likely from your security groups. Don't worry so much. We navigate back quickly at instances or in your EC2 dashboard. You navigate down and here you will see security groups. Click on the security groups and take a look at your inbound rules. See here we are missing SSH inbound rule and Usually that's the problem. So you click once again to add rule and here we select SSH. You can make it either to your IP address directly or you can make it to anywhere just to be sure for now. It will be fine. So pick anywhere and you will have 000 slash zero over here. Click save rules and it will immediately make impact. Go back to your instances, select again 2048 and click connect. Don't change anything here. You changed already security groups and in no time, this time at least, you have to be able to see this beautiful bird and now you are officially connected to your EC2 instance with the first method through the console. So what you learned now was the first option and we already have SSH connection to our EC2 instance. I'm about to show you the second option, but if you are not interested for now, you can simply skip this part even though most developers find second option more proper. It's a little hard to grasp at the beginning, but eventually you get used to it. All right, even though the first option was quite straightforward, now I want to show you the second option to connect to your EC2 instance, and that is with a proper SSH connection. Again, it might seem a little complicated, but I will try my best to explain you in details and as simple as possible. And also we will go through some potential errors that you may encounter with and make it quite smooth to troubleshoot them. All right, once again, you start in your EC2 dashboard and again, you go to your instances running and you pick 2048 here. And once again, you click connect, but instead of EC2 instance connect, what you should do is to go to SSH client and first you follow the instructions there. And for someone who is just starting, it may seem a little complicated. So we will go one through one. It's saying, suggesting for the first one to open an SSH client, the terminal in your device 
is already your SSH client. So you don't need any additional software. It's in all OSs, it's in Windows, it's in Linux, it's in MacBook. So it's terminal or command line, and this is good to go. And the only detail that I want to mention here is that I am in my My Project folder. As you remember, when we were launching our EC2 instance, we had this key pair. As soon as you created it, it is downloaded into your device and make sure that in the folder that you are in your project folder, you have 2048 key P PEM file already there. So you can see already in my screen, it's right there. So I'm in the folder that has the key pair file. Otherwise the connection wouldn't be possible. This is for your security. All right. So we fixed that detail and as it's saying in the second part, locate your private key file. This is exactly what I mentioned to you right now. And the instance should be 2048 keypair.pem. So we already secured step two. And in step three, it's saying that your private key has the necessary permissions. So what you should do is simply copy that ch mode and go back to your terminal and paste it and just click enter and it should already change the private key permissions and it brings it into the necessary mode and lastly you don't have to copy this part but you can copy the example part over here because it's basically providing you the command that you need and that is in this part you see first is ssh command that we are give, giving to our device and with a slash i we are saying that here is my key pair file and then lastly, we are providing the necessary address. This is called DNS address. We are giving it to the SSH command and we are connecting as EC2 user and after at is the DNS of the EC2 instance that we have. And once you click, you will see something similar to this one. It's basically the authenticity of your host. And this is only happening first time you connect and you can easily click right Yes, and again, you will see the birthmark over there. And that's a good sign. And right now you are basically connected to your EC2 instance. So now we created our EC2 instance and we also learned how to securely connect to our virtual server. The next step will be to install all the necessary packages and everything that we need in order to serve our 2048 game. And that will be in the next video. If you are already super excited and have no more curiosity about EC2 instance, feel free to go to the next video and already start installing files. But for those who are curious and want to learn more about EC2, let's go ahead and discuss further. And if you want to skip this part of the video, feel free to come back afterwards and check EC2 in details. To begin on details with Amazon Machine Image, we went with Amazon Linux 2023 AMI, but of course it's not the only option that we have. For various reasons, for this project, it was the optimal part, but there are also many options you have over there. You can even build with Mac OS, my favorite Ubuntu, and also Windows Server. You can basically make a virtual machine in Windows, Red Hat and SUS Linux, CentOS is probably there too, Debian. So there are plenty of types. So you can pick one of them and then you are good to go. For my personal projects, I usually go for Ubuntu. It's really easy to use. It has a very good documentation and also quite a powerful community. So whenever you are stuck, if you have something to ask, then they are always there to help you. But of course, Amazon Linux AMI is also a very good option, especially because it's tailored for AWS environment. And this is why I prefer to go with brand new Amazon Linux AMI 2023 in our project. And whenever you are doing your own project, of course, you are welcome to give a try with different AMIs also available in the market. After picking your AMI, the second detail to define is with your architecture. I could make a whole new video about the difference between x86 and ARM. But to tell you, like if you have some simplified projects such as this 2048 we are doing, ARM is a good option. But if you want to have a little more optimized results, if you want to go a little more conventional, x86 will be also a good one. And another detail that you will figure out is that depending on the architecture you use, the instance type here is changing. It's offering you different alternatives. And most of the time here, we are picking the free tier eligible or free trial available versions. But of course, depending on your project, whether it's more storage intensive or memory intensive, you can also go with x86. 
And once again, with the network settings, I can't mention enough that to generate a separate VPC for every project that you have. And of course, picking the right subnet, making sure that it's public, it's also quite critical because the rest of your architecture, the entire infrastructure will depend on this one. So make sure you create separate VPC and you start from the scratch. Another part that I want to show you is in the advanced details, even though we didn't do it in our work, in our quick go through, it's in the very bottom, you will see over there, and that is user data, it's so powerful. We will be using it quite often in our future videos, and this is basically predefined commands that we give to our EC2 instance. Let's say that anytime you launch an EC2 instance, you want to already deploy some web server or create some Python framework, you can put it there in the comment and it will create it automatically every time you launch an instance. Now, if you see some demand in the market and you see some potential for people to purchase, you can also put your EC2 templates with the user data into AWS Marketplace and actually make some extra income. So EC2 is one of the first things I created in AWS environment and it's so powerful so many things that you can do with it, it's definitely worth to master. And I'm so happy today, all together, we created our first EC2 instance and we got quite some exciting things to do ahead. Now, in case there is some detail that wasn't clear and you would like to ask or something else that you would like to add, feel free to share in the comments below. And thank you very much for creating your first EC2 instance with me. And I'll see you on the next one.